everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now this week we are going to make a lamp. Uh, it's going to be an interesting lamp, I hope, uh, and it's going to have quite a few steps, so I do apologise if the video ends up to be a little bit longer than usual. Now, in order to make this lamp, as I say, we're going to be using this piece of U, but to provide the light, we're going to be taking apart one of these little things I got from a Chinese website. And we're also going to be using one of these things. I'll tell you more about these later on, but this is one of the key aspects that inspired this video. All right, the first thing we have to do is to get this round. Uh, now, as I said, there's going to be a few steps involved with this, so it's very important that we get the top and the bottom sorted now. So let's take a look at this piece of wood. As you can see, we've got a pith here pretty well to the side. It's the same on both ends and that kind of runs around this ridge here so I think we should take that out or make sure we take that out. Now in terms of sapwood we've got more of it here than on this end so I think that's going to be the top. And that's going to be the base. Right initially I need to turn a tenon on the top so I can turn it round and start doing a few things on the base. So initially we're going to be on the lathe in this orientation uh, using the drive spur. We're going to turn it round. Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting messed up already. Right, we're going to be on the lathe in this orientation using the drive spur. We're going to, have to turn the tenon on this end so you can turn it round, hold it, and then start creating the shape for the lamp. Right, once we do start creating the shape, things are gonna get very interesting, so stick around. Okay, we're safely on the lathe, all locked off. Now, yes, I am wearing gloves, and a lot of you will be saying, or starting to type, you shouldn't be wearing gloves, but I apologize, it's two degrees, Celsius in here, which is about 35, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I have put on a small heater, so hopefully it'll warm up soon, but at the moment it's very, very cold. So forgive me. Right, we'll be starting off turning at about 650 RPM. I'm going to be going at it with a one inch roofing gouge from Record Power. And initially, I just first of all want to try and take off this lump we've got at the side here where the pith runs up, uh, and then we'll get it round and then we'll move on. all going well. I'm having a few issues with the drive spur. It keeps on slipping in there. I'll show you what I mean in a second. As you can see it's because it's so hard and it's into end grain it's just tearing it out and stripping it. Right so I'm just going to change this to a slightly different type of dry spur. Let's see if that gets us where we need to be. nearly there in terms of turning it round. I've just suddenly realised I was a complete idiot at the start. I wanted the top at the bottom to turn the tenon on and I've ended up with the top at the top. So I'm going to have to turn it in that orientation. It's, it's fine, it's not really a problem. I just usually prefer to turn my tenons on this end but uh, we can turn it here. That's not any great problem. Okay, so I'm going to turn a tenon on this end. I'm going to use the 100 mil jaws so this doesn't need to go down very much at all. Okay, 
right, I'll just take this off, put this end in the jaws, and we shall continue. Okay, we're nice and safely in the jaws now, so we can start creating uh, the base for the lamp and doing the bits we need to at this end. Now, I showed you these things at the start. What these are, are corrugated sleeves that can be used in the transportation of glass bottles or anything like that. Now, I got this idea from some cardboard packaging that had been left outside in the rain and it exposed all this kind of honeycomb shape uh, and I thought that would be really, really nice to use a project. So I started looking for honeycomb cardboard and this was the one of the ones that took my eye. Uh, it conforms to any shape, so when I was thinking we might make a beautiful lamp out of it. If we fill it with resin as well, it's gonna hopefully make it quite interesting. So what I intend to do is turn the bottom here up to about there, I think. Uh, do the what we need to do on the bottom here to get the wires in, uh, and then flute the top to make a lamp shape. Push this over the top, wrap it in plastic, and then fill it with resin. That's the idea anyway. There's a few, quite a few steps involved, but we'll go through them one by one, and hopefully at the end we'll end up something quite nice. So I think first of all, I've got to decide where the bottom of this lamp is going to be. And I'm thinking around there. Okay, I've sharpened up so we can start. I've moved up to my half inch record power ball gouge and we can increase speed now to about 1300. the base started. Now one thing we have to be careful of is that we can get everything in that we need to get in. Now the thickness of the corrugated material is about 10 millimeters and the diameter of the LED we're using is about 30 millimeters. So half of 30 is 15 plus 10 is 25 so the maximum uh, width we can go here or sorry the minimum width we can go here is 50 millimeters and at the present we are just under 70 so we can go in a little bit further than that That's excellent. I shall set up the drilling. I'll bring it back in a second. Okay, the first hole we're going to drill here is going to work as a, a recess for when we turn this around. And then after this, we're going to go in with a long old good bit and drill a hole down the center. That's for the wire. I've turned the speed down the lathe. start working this area now to try and create uh, the top half of the vase as it will be and then we'll take it down uh, to the depth it needs to be to get the sleeve over the top. sleeve we've got to get on. When it does expand it does uh, get shorter so I think if we have the bottom of the vase there so we need to take all of this in 
by at least 10 milliliters. got that sorted let's go and get set up ready to pour some resin okay I think we've got everything we need to start creating this mold uh, now this is the cardboard sleeve we're going to be using like I said this is generally designed to protect bottles and things like that in for packaging but we're gonna use this bottle today to help us get it over the top of our piece. All right. There we go. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit long, so I'm going to trim that down in a second. But it's fairly close to the edge. So one thing I'm, I was a little bit concerned about is, will resin pour into this okay? Or will it get stuck and not fill all the holes? So what I'm going to do with these paper straws, I'm just going to tape them to the sides like that, and that'll hopefully provide channels that the resin can flow down. Right, this is gonna get uh, lots of fingers and thumbs here, so first of all, I think I'll cut off the excess on here. Okay, that's easier said than done. This is the one bit I thought would be easy. That wasn't, wasn't too bad. Right. And now I'm going to have to arrange these straws around the edge. Now, I was thinking, do I hold them all in place with elastic band? Okay, that would work pretty well. Okay. Okay, on my last resin piece, I had a leak and uh, a lot of people suggested, and quite rightly as well, I think, that the leak would have come from the resin melting the glue, uh, the hot glue. So this week we're going to be using silicon sealer. And I'll put a bead of this around the edge. And to wrap it, I was thinking of using this silicon sheet. This is like a, well, it's advertised as a very, very cheap craft mat, but I think it'll serve our purposes perfectly. And before I go all the way around, I just want to put a layer of sealant up there as well. And then, on top of all that, I'm going to wrap it in waterproof tape. Now that, I'm fairly sure, should be all right. We've got room down the edges to pour the resin. So that's going to be fine. Not the prettiest looking thing in the world. But then again, I don't really expect it to be. But uh, okay, right, I'm gonna let this set up and then we'll mix some resin. Okay, we're about ready and set up to start pouring the resin. Uh, I took off a lot of the tape I'd put on and reinforced it with some more silicon sealant and a bit of cling film after that. When I've finished it, when it's been poured, I'm gonna sit it in a plastic container. So if it does leak, it's not going to ruin my work top like it did last time. Okay, we're going to be using the Let's Resin Deep Pour Epoxy again. This stuff worked absolutely amazing the first time we used it, so I've got no hesitation whatsoever to use it again. And we're going to be 
pouring four cups worth, each with 150 mil in each one. 100 mil of the hardener, sorry, 100 mil of part A and 50 mil of part B. I've put marks on the cups so I know exactly where I'm filling to. Okay, this is part A, so we're going to be pouring 100 mil in each one from this. add 50 millilitres of part B. And now we mix. Don't skimp this bit. Do make sure you give each one a very thorough mixing. Okay. That's all four nicely mixed. Now we're making a lamp, so we are going to colour it, but we don't want to colour it too much and turn it opaque. So I've got four colours selected here, which I think will go well with the U. And I'm just going to put a very, very small amount into each one. sit for a little while to let the bubbles come to the surface before we start pouring. Okay we're ready to start pouring. I've just trimmed down the top of it so the camera can see in a little bit easier. Now we do have space in this size to pour so I am going to pour each one fairly carefully and deliberately and we'll see how it goes. I don't know if I've got too much or too little in terms of resin but I guess we're going to find out soon enough. Okay, I'll let that settle, but I think I am going to have to make up another couple of cups. Okay, right, I've mixed up three more colours. There's one extra colour, which I didn't use before, which is like a wine colour, which I thought might be interesting. So I'll put a bit of this in first. And if I've made up too much here, then I do have some smaller moulds, which I'll put in, and I can use the end result for something else. See, we are getting closer to the top now. There is a reasonable chance that this could drop down because I think the cardboard is going to absorb a little bit of the resin. So I'm going to keep these pots available and over the course of the next hour or so, I'll just come in and top up if necessary. leave it like that. I'll come in every 30 minutes or so and check on it. But so far so good. I can't see any leaks whatsoever. But I think I've said that before. So let's keep our fingers crossed and we'll check again soon. I'll bring you back when it's dry and we're back on the lathe. Okay, we're all nice and dry. I think we'll start unpacking. Okay, 
was hoping to maybe be able to, to save the silicon mat, but I don't think I can. That's just gonna rip. Yeah, so I'll just cut that off. Okay, that's interesting, we've got some of the, uh, the silicon mat underneath the resin. Ow. Right, okay, well that looks interesting. That looks very interesting. Right, I'll get this on the lathe and we shall see if it holds together. Okay, we're all set up, ready to go. Lathe is nice and safe and locked off. Uh, initially turning about 800 RPM to try and start clearing a lot of this rubbish away to see what earth happened underneath. Uh, I'm wearing a glove again because yes, it is still cold, but also some of these shards of resin that come off could be a little sharp. So we'll see how it goes. Progressing. We're not quite through all the straws yet. Looks like the straws filled up with resin as well. That's quite impressive. Okay, all right, we'll carry on. We've got a few low dips, so we've still got a fair way to go. So we'll just carry on. progress. Still got a way to go to get rid of the straws. Uh, I can see the corrugated cardboard in these areas here. Can't see it here yet. So we've obviously got to go down a little bit. So I'm going to concentrate in this area, feather it on the either sides of that and see how we get on. see the corrugated cardboard all through the whole thing which is good still got some areas here to take down and obviously there as well so good all right I'm gonna start I think I'll start feathering these two in together so it's gonna be a bit of carbide work and a bit of gouge work gaps I've got up here. I may fill those with CA, but maybe a bit deep. Or I may just lose that top end. I think it'll still look nice. Okay, right, I'm just going to clean up this rest of this surface because I've got a, cu a couple of dips in there still. And then I think we can start sanding. set up for sanding. I'll let you watch a bit of it. But I shall bring you back if I hit any problems or if I decide to fill these areas here.
Okay, sanding went well. Uh, I'm not putting a finish on this yet because I want to tape this over quite well with uh, a heavy duty masking tape because the walls on here are gonna get quite thin as we're holding it out and I don't want it shattering. I'm not saying it's gonna stop it shattering but I wanna try and do all I can to stop that process. Now also, I also haven't filled in these holes yet because I've got a slight idea of how we can make the top edge a little more rustic and interesting and not have to go through the ordeal of filling those. I don't actually have time before this video needs to go out to actually fill them as well. So I'm trying to think of clever ways to save myself work uh, or to delay a video. All right, first of all, I'm just gonna quickly take down this top a little bit before we start hollowing out. Take this over, bring up my steady rest, and then we'll start hollowing. Okay, so we're all set up ready to start hollowing. Uh, I'm going to be using various sizes drill bits and forstner bits to slowly get this uh, hole wider and wider as we go down. Now, as you can see, we've only got a very, very thin wall, so we are going to have to be very, very careful. Uh, this is the, the dangerous point. So I'm gonna take it nice and slowly, nice and easily, and keep my fingers crossed. that hole as much as I dare using a force and a bit and then it's a case of turning it down bit by bit by hand so this is going to be fun with my little light might help a little bit right very carefully very slowly starting from the edge going all the way down my own uh, life choices, shall we say. That has got to be the most ridiculously hard thing I have ever done in my entire life. Good thing is I get to sand it now. Yay. Right, I shall sand it. I'll let you watch a bit of it, but it's gonna take a little while, I think. look at the final finish. I'm going to go on initially with a cellulose sanding sealer. Now very important with this I'm not going to use any uh, abrasive pastes or anything like that because with all these holes everything will just get clunked up and it'll be a nightmare to try and get out so I'm just going to go with liquid based finishes for now. this in while it's spinning so it can dry it off. Okay, I'm just going to go over again over the top of this with uh, an 800 grit abrasive pad.
clean off all the residue with a bit of isopropyl. And then when this has evaporated, I'll put the final coats of shine juice on. Okay, the shine juice is just a 50-50 a mix of boiled linseed oil and shellac. And I'm going to apply this while spinning. Before I do that, I'm going to put the face mask on because I don't want to start tasting this. back and put a couple more coats on and I shall bring you back in a second when we're putting this all together. Okay we're all about ready to start putting the electricals into the lamp. This is what I've taken off that little unit I showed you at the start. Uh, it's just a normal power cable with a switch and a USB port at one end. Uh, I desoldered these two wires initially off the LED uh, and I've just tinned them a little bit to make it nice and easy to put them back on. I did photograph the positions on here before I took them off so I don't forget. Now the first thing we need to do is to drill a hole in the side here so the cable will come out the back as opposed to out the bottom. I've put a little hole there, a little dot on the bad bit of this which is uh, basically to hide this crack here which I have filled. So I'll just put a little hole in here. Go any further, I will just check that these fit through. Right, so we shall pull that as far through as it'll go to give us room, and then push this up through a hole that I've drilled all the way through the center. Okay, I'm all set up. I've turned on my soldering iron. The first one that I have to get in is this black one onto that connection there. Well, that was easy. Right, let's do the, the red. Okay, now before I install this back into the piece, I better check if this still works. Yep, still works. Yay! Right, I shall glue this down to the bottom with a bit of hot glue and I shall bring you back after I've tied it up and we can have a look at our finished lamp. Okay, well it's all put together. Do you want to see it? Cardboard and resin on a U base. That really is quite a, a striking design. I get these ideas from the strangest places. This one came from seeing some wet cardboard out the side of the house, and it was just something I, I had. To, I found myself having to do. I don't really often get the choice in these matters. If I get an idea in my head and. I don't like to relax until I've managed to, to do it. The resin's done fantastically. Don't forget this was done without a pressure pot or a vacuum chamber. So what we have is actually quite remarkable. The danger areas were when I was trying to hollow it out. I mean, this is only probably about five millimeters thin, these walls. And to get something that thin, that far away uh, from the wood with only a very, very narrow connection point and for it to be as solid as it is, is actually quite remarkable. I am so pleased with how it's worked. Initially, I thought the LED 
might not quite be strong enough, but looking at it, I think it's okay. There's so many different things we could do. We could put longer stem proper lights in there. You know, I just used one of these little cheap units from China because it's what I had to hand. And uh, for a proof of concept, I thought it would work quite well. Please let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Remember, if you do leave a comment, you're always going to be entered into the giveaway when we get to that point. Uh, I haven't quite got a date yet, but I'm sure I will have one relatively soon. Uh, if you're interested in trying this resin, it's by a company called Let's Resin. Uh, it does work incredibly well. Uh, there are discount codes in the description below this video uh, for 10% off. Even if it's a sale item, the 10% discount will still work. Uh, but apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. This has been such a challenge, but I've loved every second. Anyway, right, until next time, thank you. Thank you.